Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check out Go Cuckoo from Haba Games. This is for two to five players, ages four to ninety-nine. It'll take about fifteen minutes to play, and in Go Cuckoo, you are going to be creating a bird's nest and then trying to lay all of your eggs on that nest without having those eggs fall off the nest or fall through the nest. If you're able to do that, then you're going to place a little baby bird in the nest. If you do that, you'll win the game. This is a children slash family dexterity game from Hava Games who has a very solid track record with me. Does this continue that solid track record? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think about it. Alrighty then, so we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Go Cuckoo. So first and foremost, we're going to handy dandy rule booklets. You'll need the first six pages. They'll, they're double-sided, full of colors, pictures, illustrations. Very well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. And I can also teach you how to play the game right now. So inside of Go Cuckoo, Cuckoo, you are going to be getting a bunch of these multicolored sticks. Generally, they will have two colors on each side, red and yellow in this example. Sometimes you'll get ones that are matches. So for instance, green and green like so. You are trying to get those sticks right there. If you get those sticks, then you are going to be able to play your sticks on top of this bird's nest and then try to play your eggs on top of the nest. What am I talking about? I'll show you exactly how it works. So when you first start the game, you are going to divvy up these eggs right here to the different players. So depending on how many players you have, each player is going to have an equal amount of eggs. So you get your, let's just say, four eggs in front of you. Now, you're going to go clockwise, and on your turn, you are going to draw a stick from out of here and it has to be one that's pointing up like this it can't be one that someone has already laid onto the nest your goal is to get a match so let's see i have a green and a blue that is not a match so i put it down in front of me and now i have to draw a blue stick because that's what was on the bottom so i'll draw this blue stick over here and bada boom i got a blue and a blue i got a match so what i'm gonna do now is i'm going to put the sticks uh, vertically, like this, horizontally, excuse me, like this, and I'm going to try to attempt to play one of my eggs on to the nest. So let's see if I can do it successfully. Play it on there, and oh, no, it fell off the side, which means it just goes back to me and it would go to the next player's turn. So let's take the next player's turn. He's going to draw this yellow one. He's got yellow and red, so now he has to draw a red stick. Red and yellow, bad luck. Try one more yellow and green so his entire turn is over he's going to play these sticks onto the nest but he does not get to attempt to play the eggs which is how you win the game so he plays those then we get to the next player's turn let's cheat a little bit so he gets red red boom first try so he's going to place that down on there and you're trying to place them so that you can place your eggs obviously and then he's going to try and place the egg onto the nest so that it does not fall down. And look at that, he has successfully done that, which means his turn is over. Now, you may be asking what would have happened if the egg would have fallen down. If that's the case, that the egg has fallen down into the nest, then you are going to take one of the eggs from the player who has the most eggs. If there's a tie for who has the most eggs, then that means you are going to take one egg from all of those players. So there's definitely a catch-up mechanism going on in the game. So let's just uh, continue to build this up a little bit, because eventually what's going to happen is you are going to run out of eggs, because eggs will fall down to the bottom. And once they fall down to the bottom, you're not actually going to retrieve them. And uh, you'll get to the point where you don't have any eggs, where you're about to win the game. Well, you don't win the game immediately as soon as you put your last egg on there. You wait until your next turn, and then you have to place Cuckoo on the nest, because obviously the mama bird has to be able to, or the baby bird or whatever it is, has to be able to sit on the nest. So you're going to attempt to put Cuckoo on the nest. If you can do that without him falling off, then you won the game. Now in this particular example, since one egg fell off, Cuckoo would go off the nest and I would take someone else's egg. So I would still continue to play. But once someone is able to successfully put Cuckoo on the nest, get rid of all their eggs, then put Cuckoo on the nest, they will be the winner of Go Cuckoo. And that in a nutshell is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Go Cuckoo from Haba Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, I don't think this is necessarily an adult game. Now, that being said, I think you could play this as a dexterity game or a drinking game and still have some fun, but for the most part, this is aimed at the children's slash family game crowd. You're not in the market for one of those games. This one might not be for you. Also, it is pure dexterity, and it can be frustrating for some kids, especially if they got shaky hands or they're not good with their hands. They, they haven't properly developed their fine motor skills. They can get frustrated because sometimes 
you know, the nest will fall over and different sticks will fall out of the nest and their eggs will fall out. And that can be frustrating for the kids, but hey, tell them to suck it up. Um, any other cons that I have with the game? Some people aren't going to like the tin. Some people aren't, you know, some people just are preconditioned not to like tins, but honestly, the tin is crucial to the gameplay. So I'm going to completely give that one a pass and say, you're foolish. And I really don't have too many cons on this game. Gokuku is outstanding. This is a very easy recommendation for anyone who has kids or is looking for a family game. Period. That's it. End of the discussion. End of the review. Why is this game so great? Fantastic components. You already expect that from Hamba Games. Fantastic components. Fantastic artwork. I really like the artwork. The theme works. This definitely does feel like you're building a little nest and trying to put your eggs on the nest because you don't want your eggs to fall. I also like the catch-up mechanisms, which is one thing I forgot to mention in the con. Some people don't like catch-up mechanisms, but in a kid's game, I feel like it actually helps both adults and kids enjoy the game more. So I actually do like the catch-up mechanism, so I think it's a very good solid because you can... As an adult, you can screw up at strategic times and bring kids right back into the game and it feels cosmetic, which I like. Also, even if you screw up, as long as the, the, the egg falls through the nest, it still speeds up the game because there's less eggs to play with. I really like how everything mechanism-wise works in this game. Clear, concise rule booklet. Uh, I played it in my classroom. They had a blast with it. I played it with my wife. She liked it a lot. I played it with a couple members of my family. They enjoyed it. Everyone I've played this game with has liked this game. My son loves it. My classroom loves it. I love it. My wife loves it. It's a no-brainer. Go Cuckoo from Hobba Games is going to go down as one of those evergreen games I have a feeling for them. It is just an absolutely outstanding children slash family game that needs to be on your shelf uh, for the foreseeable future. So that is Go Cuckoo from Hobby Games, one that I absolutely can recommend to you if you have kids or if you play games with kids. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what is your favorite kind of cereal. For me personally, it is Fruity Pebbles. Oh, I love Fruity Pebbles. Oreo O's are probably a close second as well. I can't believe they got rid of those. Why did they get rid of those? They're so good. But let me know in the comments below, what are your favorite, what's your favorite type of cereal? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.